Welcome to the new Secretariat Complex of Ebony State Government. Uh, where we are now was part of the land acquired in 1976 by the Nigerian Army. So when we came in, we observed that this place was too close to the main city as a firing range and we negotiated with them by the 4th of December 2007. They ceded part of the land, so close to 1,000 hectares. And uh, it's called Ochudo City. Uh, Ochudo, not only is Ochudo my title, but it represents the, the drive of the government that everything must be done with peace in mind. And uh, this is the complex. It's made up of 11 buildings. Um, nine of them have two elevators each. Two of them have three elevators each, making 24 elevators. The height is uniform. Each is four floors. And each contains, uh, each is meant to contain two ministries. First, uh, ground floor and first floor, one ministry. Second floor and third floor, another ministry. It also has provision for the office of the secretary to the state government, uh, civil service commission, head of service, and so on and so forth. It was computed after careful study of the requirements of the various ministries with a little projection for future expansion. That's why it is this massive. Originally, the contract was for 11 and a quarter billion naira. But thereafter, a number of things came into consideration. The approach road you saw, the fencing, the internal roads, as well as uh, security gadgets. The security gadgets are very paramount in that uh, with uh, complex and know what is happening. Similarly, the entrance to each uh, building has its own uh, security outfit. So we are uh, not yet sure of the total cost ultimately until it is finished because every day we are uh, presented new bills, new uh, increases, like the car ports, the stone pitching, which uh, were uh, underestimated. So we believe it will be under 17 billion by the time it is uh, completed. And that includes, as I said, the entrance road you saw and the, and the perimeter fencing. Uh, behind uh, the f building in front of me, uh, is an artificial lake which uh, was an improvement on the little stream there by the contractors to enable them have water during the dry season. So since the, the job started, they've never lacked water. Um, initially, they were uh, faced by the wave of kidnapping. It's an Italian company and one of their foremost engineers was uh, captured early in the beginning of the project. That, of course, uh, sent in uh, a, a, a shock wave. Thanks to God, we were able to rescue him. But then came the global economic meltdown, and our finances kept diminishing and diminishing and diminishing. That's why we have not completed it. But uh, the contractors are saying that if we improve our funding before the end of April this year, they should be able to hand over. We are looking at that seriously because uh, the civil servants are now itching to go to their new homeland. And if you recall what I said during the courtesy call, we pay so much attention to the welfare of civil servants as the engine house of uh, government programs. 
uh, we want to get that done before the middle of this year latest the water you will uh, the water scheme you will observe later on is going to be connected to this uh, complex so that uh, nothing shall be lacking we also procured uh, uh, turbines gas turbines two gas turbines from the u.s and uh, they are close to the government house the place where they will be mounted is right in front of us we think that the gas turbines two of them come uh, giving a total of 10 megawatts should be able to light this complex together with the market in front of us and the streets we pass through up to the university campus as a first phase by the time our power scheme is completed uh, this will just be a little addition to it so this is the much we can show you for now because of uh, time constraint and uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions thank you sir Uh, Your Excellency, sir, I'm Benjamin Angu from RDI, representing civil society. I, it's a fact that this is a massive structure and uh, is linked with your ideology for changing the attitude of civil servants in this state and in Nigeria. What about the housing for the civil servant in your state? If you can do this, what are you thinking about the housing for them? Thank you, sir. Yes, it's a very complex layout. Between here and the major road we veered in from is the housing, uh, the, the housing layout. All right? It's a massive place. But we also want to ensure that um, you satisfy the needs of different segments of society. Uh, we are encouraging housing ownership, not only in the capital city, but also in our local government areas. Um, so, the housing scheme started by my predecessor in office. We continued when we came on board. It is not just here. We have one 11 kilometers away from the city, and uh, we have another one in... Um, central zone of the state another one in the southern zone of the state because upon retirement most people may want to be close to their homes so there is a plan uh, we also looked into the prospects of using uh, local materials as the major component and uh, we went into serious discussion with a german company which uh, found our soil very good for that. And they also had a dialogue with uh, a mortgage bank. But we thought we were carrying too much at a time. And we wanted to slow down a bit, finish certain things before going into others. That's the position. Your Excellency, sir, tell us about the fire safety, that's fire brigade, uh, uh, police post, and the, a small hospital for this area. What have you done to regarding uh, this provision, sir? Your name, sir. Yahya yeah, Omar, FRCN. Thank you. Well, uh, fire brigade, that is uh, technical, but if you go inside, you see that the partitioning uh, is uh, done with uh, fireproof material. That is very important. And for the police post, we, we, we have it in the master plan, but the police experts have to give their views as to whether it is necessary to have one here or to have a bigger post in front which will, take into, uh, which will handle both the complex as well as uh, the market. There is provision for that in the market. If there is a need for additional police posts here, then it will be looked into. Does that satisfy you? The, the, the clinic, hospital. Yeah. 
Everybody needs uh, medical treatment. Everybody needs uh, health uh, care services. Uh, I wouldn't say we have one inside here, but the needs will uh, indicate themselves with time. All right? Yes, sir, but uh, so far there is provision for canteen. This one. <laughs> and I know you will like it. Somebody wants to know no. if the cost uh, equality is not uh, punishing of the company. No. We've, the head of service is uh, looking into uh, the need to get most of the furniture items from local people, not imported. So you have uh, local content. So she has uh, talked with many furniture companies across the, the nation to, to see the best um, offers. But the, the cost we are putting is just for the structures only. Excellency, uh, my own is observation, and yeah, maybe at the end, my name is Lawal Ahmed. My own is an observation, and then maybe a question. I look at the place, I can't see any tree standing. That is that is giving me a worry. And then I'm also concerned about the small pack of water I'm seeing there. At the end of the day, what it's going to look like. I would suggest that if you can have a creation for the uh, works that are going to be here, it will be wonderful. Thank you. It only means uh, I was not understood. I said there is uh, a green pack there. If you go out, you see it just at the foundation stage. It will have a bank. It will have a shopping uh, center. It will also have a conference place and uh, eating uh, arrangement as well, both for those who work here and for those who may want to come from outside the secretariat complex. Uh, as for trees, uh, you have to do the mapping out first so that when you plant a tree, you don't uproot it subsequently. But if you look carefully, you might have seen a few of them germinating and others are dying. So uh, tree planting is not uh, what we will take for granted or even forget in a, a complex like this. It is ongoing, sir. for his vision and for his leadership. I also say it's not about money. It's not about the age of a state. It is about vision, it's about leadership and what you are able to do to manage the little resources you have. I think this secretariat, for me, is a very, very huge achievement of His Excellency the Governor. Um, I also want to add that I don't want to congratulate civil servants. I want to ask them that with this development, would there be a change of attitude? Well, that is what is most important because I've, I've been around the system. I've been coming up as a commissioner, as a deputy governor, or as a teacher. I've worked through the system. We are not delivering on our promise. Civil service is not delivering on its promise to the nation. It's our country. There's nothing to hide. There's nothing to hide at all. There is nothing to hide at the federal system, at the state system, at the local government system. The greatest difficulty we have today is how the engine of government will deliver on government projects. Ordinarily, shouldn't we have Italian companies building this? It should be a Boeing state companies. The Plateau State Secretary I'm talking about was built by Benue Plateau State uh, uh, a construction company, Bepco. It remains one of the strongest buildings you see in this country today. If you go to Jaws, go behind the NTA. You will see the structure that we are building about local companies. But today, virtually, we can't do anything like this through government. And I'm worried. So as we put in this level of resources to create an environment for our workers, my challenge always has been that what will be our attitude to building our state and our country? Well, we can build this thing by the time the governor goes. You come back here in another 10 years, they have run it down. You will not see any louver on the building. You know, you will see a place that is so decrepit that you will never believe this how it was looking at the beginning. So it poses a challenge to the workers. So as we are creating the environment for them, 
I'm sure that the head of service and other people should begin to think about what they will do to pay back to the people of Eboin for this type of environment that has been is being delivered through greater commitment, through higher productivity, through more sincerity in the way we do our work by making sure we don't cut corners so that our country can also look like any other country in the world. It's our country. So the problem of public service today is that change of attitude. And that, in my opinion, not all of us, we are all public servants. So we must change for our country to change along with us. And if we do that, you can see uh, young boy is now looking like one of those very old states, and uh, which means that our democracy is delivering. And what it takes is leadership to do so, and commitment by every one of us. I thank you very much indeed, Your Excellency. Thank you.